your podcast is all about reading and talking about celebrity books, like their autobiographies that, and, and we were just texting today and like, you think like, oh, there's only a handful of celebrity autobiographies, but we're going to talk about a few today. And there are so many, so many, Random. there's probably 500 uh, that I would want to read. And then probably 300 where you're like, we're going to skip those. Man. What do you think? Can I give you a recommendation of one good one that I read? I was such a Jamie Kennedy fan that Jamie Kennedy, after like the first season of the Jamie Kennedy experiment and like the first or second screen movie, wrote his own autobiography called like the Jamie Experiment. And it was like the book and it was his, like he didn't have that much life. Like he's a 25 year old guy. He had like 20, like it wasn't like he hadn't gone through that much and that book was out. And I remember reading it and just being like, this is the funniest thing I've ever read in my have life. To read that now. <laughs> it, it is amazing. Because it's like most people don't have that much to fill up a book. Like Obama, yeah, he could do two books, 700 pages, and you, you just get to the White House. Like, that's fine. I get it. But uh, Jamie Kennedy, right off of not the, ex, the X experiment, uh, had not even been canceled yet, and he's writing a 200-page book. That's, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, Chelsea, I will definitely pick that one up and read it. I love a good shit show. Chelsea, give me uh, some of the, like, the best, worst ones that you've read. Like, I, I have I, a few I, here. That yeah. I can pull up and maybe go through, and because you may not know the order, Chelsea, I'll, I'll just kind of show it here. Um, sure. This first one, yeah. So the Lynn Spears, okay. yeah, through the storm. This is one of the worst, and I wanted to talk about this on your show because on the podcast, my rule is that it has to be a memoir, and it has to be the woman wrote it herself. So it can't be like a friend, okay. like mom. So this is one. I was in a deep Britney hole this summer. Free Britney, obviously. She doesn't have a memoir, but Lynn does. So I was like, I got to read it. This book, after Britney's huge breakdown in 2007, this book was published in 2007. That means her wow. daughter broke down and she was immediately like, tap, 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 like published. Ugh. Every chapter ends with a, I swear to God, with a line like, I just had no idea what was happening. I just wish I knew what was ahead. I was just a sweet woman. They were every, but in every chapter, you're like, you still don't know. And then halfway through the book, she's like, and then it was Jamie Lynn Spears' turn. Oh and god! Like, you already, <laughs> you've already you, done it. Now you know. You yeah, this is your second. This is your do over. Jamie Lynn is your do over. The first half of the book you wrote, like. <laughs> Um, well, do you, do you think that she actually wrote it? Because this is like somebody's like, no way she wrote it. Like, or do you think it's like one of those things where someone just came over to her house, recorded her and just like, just dropped it all together. Cause my wife wrote a book and it took forever for it to get like, and she was, you know, just like th through all the processes of like copy editing and everything like that. Like it takes a while, but these books come out so quick. But June's smart and has awareness and wants a good book. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Um, I guess there's well, some fly by night publishers who's like, just go, go, get yeah, yeah. Get it out there. Yeah. I mean, she definitely had someone help her. But what I truly believe about memoirs is that your everyone's spirit comes through. It's too many pages, right. it's too many words. Like that woman's spirit will always be inside the book. And um, sh sh you can like hear if it had a real writer and only them, it'd be a better book because they would know not to say some of this shit. Right. <laughs> yeah. By the way, someone pointed out in the chat, like it says through the storm, but she's looking at a very clear window. It's it's a beautiful day out. There's no storm out. That's not stormy weather. That's a that is like someone who's trapped inside a house on a nice day. Well, That's someone else fierce life now trapped inside a house on a nice day. <laughs> someone else asked, uh, <laughs> I know who Jamie Lynn is, I know who Brittany is. Who the fuck is Brian? <laughs> oh my god, her brother who she tried Lynn tries to put Brian in the book because she's talking about her two famous daughters and she's like, mm -hmm. and, and he's there too, but he's barely in the book. Um okay, oh do you guys my know god. who Sam Lufty is? Uh no. no. Okay, oh, no. it's I mean no need to. He was Britney Spears manager when she's like uh has the umbrella and when and when like um when they have to call the cops to pull her out of the bathroom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And shaved head Britney. Shaved head Britney. And he got her addicted on pills and into the conservatorship. He also got Amanda Bynes into her conservatorship. He's he was oh. also manager and was also Courtney Love's manager and was the guy who oh into her daughter's ex-husband's house to steal Kurt Cobain's car, uh, guitar back. That's Sam. Jeez. Wow. In okay. I, 
Keep going. This keep is, going. Yeah, keep on. Keep going. This is what's so crazy about what's in the book. So Sam Lufty like ruins Britney Spears' life, like the way she is now. Obviously, her parents did too, but he's a big part of it. This is how he got into Britney's life. And it's in Lynn's book. He call Lynn gets a call one day from a random number, and a guy on the phone is like, drugs are hidden on Britney and she's gonna be arrested. And he hangs up and she's like, oh my God. So she runs over, they they look for drugs to see, and nothing happens. She's like, that was weird. Four months later, she gets another phone call. And he's like, hey, what's up? Uh, my name's Sam. And she's like, you're the guy who called me about drugs being planted on my daughter. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting a jewelry company. Would you like to be the spokeswoman for my new line of jewelry? And Lynn is like, I'd love to. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> Goes to Whoa. lunch, anonymous man, to, be, to have her own jewelry line. He then befriends her with a fake jewelry line meets Britney Spears, cuts Lynn out, becomes her manager, the jewelry line was fake, and takes over Britney's life. And Lynn was like, oh, I wish I'd I wish I'd known. What the Lynn fuck? is has a, Lynn has had head trauma. That's the only way you can describe it. If she's not putting two and two together, I will say that Rob and I played a very crucial part, not a crucial part, but we were at a very interesting part of Britney's life. We were at the MTV music awards for the epic fail that opening number and we were right underneath her as she performed and i will say i always say this that in the room at that point it didn't look that bad and when you watch it on tv i remember going up to like somebody's room afterwards and watching it on tv and we we're going oh but like when you were in the audience it was passable it was but i remember that moment so clearly like we were we were doing something and someone like oh yeah britney hasn't come she hasn't rehearsed she hasn't done anything and the fallout from that was insane, but we were right there, like underneath the uh, their legs as they were dancing on tables right there. I cannot believe you witnessed that. Yeah, that those are the Sam Lufty years. He he like <laughs> had her on pills and he didn't know what the word insomnia was. And, uh, that's another red flag. That, but she's like, I take insomnia pills, but I don't know what insomnia is. That's in one's book. Well, <laughs> just to just to double back for a second, if you got him as your manager, you would be able to get a prescription to whatever you want. <laughs> Done. Oh my that's god, you were right. So get on that. Um, we have a bunch of. Shit. We can we can bypass any ones that you want. We can stay on any ones, but I'll I'll show you the next one that we have here, which is great. Uh, Classic, classic. This is old school autobiography because wow. I remember when wow. that came out. Wow. Yeah. It's out of print now. Like to buy a copy, it's like $75. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Not even a Kindle. You can't even get a Kindle edition of it. You can't even get a Kindle edition. They they don't want this book out because it was written. She wrote it at 14 years old. Whoa. Uh, and no. uh, we're do the podcast episode about it actually drops tomorrow. But it's so that and then her ghostwriter, you can see Todd Gold on there. Yeah. This book launches his career. He goes on to write like Richard Pryor's memoir, Johnny Osmond's Dog. Um, and he, in the book, it's like he's like the worst ghostwriter of all time. And it sounds like he's her mom in the book. Um, oh, not that wow. he is, he's just like describing her body a lot. Um, and you're like, what? And then Drew's like, yeah. And then I had my first glass of wine when I was nine years old at Rob Lowe's birthday party. Whoa. Of course. Of course. Oh, man. Um, so how crazy is this book, though? Like, is is it uh, like, uh, is it all just the stories of her just insanity, like being a child actor in that world? It is. It's crazier than that. It's crazy. It's so this is one of the craziest books ever. Um, oh gosh. All those stories of like uh, at Rob Lowe's birthday party, I became an alcoholic when I was 10 years old. But then it's also this crazy shit her mom was doing to her and that, that the ghostwriter was writing about it and then like getting pulled in and out of rehab. And then like at 13 years old, like, I mean, just the book is just insane. And so it, it's, it's salacious. It's good. Or is it like a little um, too play? Like, well, yeah, where does it fall? Like, is it, do you feel bad or you're like, Ooh, I want to more. <laughs> it's just a um, it, 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 to, to bring a full circle, it makes you feel like you're on cocaine, which she does a lot in the book. And so you're like, oh, this is amazing. And then after you finish the book, you're like, I'm really sad. But wow. you can also embrace how cool she has become. And she really did turn a corner. She came out of it. Yeah. yeah, she came out of it. 
So there she, is something of good about it. Yeah, no, she, it made me love her because I mean, she gets emancipated at 14. She's an incredible woman. And now that she has her late night show, I'm like, oh, I get you. Like you, she you survived the Yeah. 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 She seems she's really, really awesome. You just did I just her, show. her show. Yeah, yeah. And she was right. awesome. And like, she's just like, there is, it doesn't feel like, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Like, because talk shows are such a weird beast anyway, right? Like you have to go there and they just know that you're just moving through the the thing. But she just, it kind of feels like she's going to do whatever she wants and she knows they'll cut it down to something that will actually fit in the show. But she will go off and we had so many fun tangents, but she didn't feel encumbered by like, oh, I got to make a thing. I got to get to commercial break. I have to do anything. It's just like, I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to talk about my chickens. I'm going to talk about this, talk about bunk beds. And it was like, I'm on this wild ride with her. And it was like, I, I, very genuine. I thought that was actually really cool. I love that. Yeah, she. that's what she seems like. Just like a really, she's been in the limelight since she's so young and she's just like an open book. Somebody uh, brought this up in the chat or I, or they, they brought up the name and I want to bring up what I have. I have a DVD in my collection that I love so much. It's a Corey Haim DVD called Me, Myself, and I, which is a VHS, I, it's, a, it's a ripped from a VHS, where it's like him trying to do a book, but it was like a VHS tape to basically explain, like, I'm not really a drug addict, and but it's like a self-produced propaganda piece on Corey Haim, and it's, <laughs> you can watch a lot of it on YouTube, it's amazing, and I just remember like him just floating in a pool, like on a pool floaty, just like, hey, what's up? You know, so it's like, it's to the team beat audience, trying to be like, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really a drug addict, I'm cool, and it's <laughs> amazing. Oh God! I mean, he's in her book too. That makes sense. Oh wow! And right, Chelsea, we'll do you Chelsea? Do you mostly do? Uh, it sounds like Hollywood people, or do you ever do like any of these weirdo like Trump people, or you know, like Ivanka or Kimberly Gill? I'm, I don't even know who who of those people has books. But. Um, when I worked for John Stewart, I, so I've always read these books. It was it, pre podcast. This is just my favorite genre because I grew up next to Walmart. <laughs> that they have. Um, no, I genuinely love them. But the Walmart thing is true. But um, when I worked for John, I read all of the Fox women's memoirs, because it's oh, wow. just fucking fascinating. And you really get into their head and see their point of view. I would never put them not never but like, it's gonna have to be like year seven of this podcast when yeah. I used to be like that only because there's so many good ones of like cool women that right, like right. i don't need to do meg like megan kelly's yet yeah 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 all right so here's an job, and then you can come on and do her memoir <laughs> i will like um here's the next one we got here uh all right this one i didn't know get that uh like that she even had a book but this feels like what what is going on in this book uh like it is, what yeah what yeah it's so good no ghostwriter and uh, yeah, no ghostwriter for reals because and yeah. for real for reals because in the podcast, um, the end of the episode is an interview with her where I got to Whoa. like, oh, wow. and this book is like, uh, it's one, it has some of the darkest content of any memoir, but she's so funny you don't realize it, and so it's just like a beautiful read. Um, yeah, but the reason I put this one next to Drew's is that. In 1982, when Drew was in E.T. as a little girl, not the starring role, she got $75,000 for that movie. Wow. Gabby Ray, very, like, perfect pettiness, drops that for Precious, which she starred in 20 years later, she got $30,000. Wow. Whoa. Isn't that horrific? And I, like, everyone's like, $30,000 is a lot of money. And you're like, no, no, she got, like. No, 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 no. She got, like, over yeah. and huge before the movie comes out she gets she and her mom get evicted and they get evicted on the night of a tyler perry premiere oh. and someone's like you have to call lee you're the star of his movie you have to tell him you're being evicted and they're being evicted on a clerical error not because they didn't pay rent okay, it's yeah. like, and she calls lee and he's like what happened to all your money but it was like thirty thousand dollars before taxes and a year ago it's also like this misconception too that you're just automatically rich if you've been in something or done something. It's yeah, like yeah, it yeah. doesn't always work out like that. I remember Rob and I were doing Best Week Ever back in the day, and people were like, "Oh, you have too much money." It's like you were you would get five hundred dollars a week to do Best Week Ever, and then after the taxes get taken out, like what what is that? You can't even pay your rent, but you'd be on TV every single week, you know, or, or you yeah. you, you, know, you get some version of that, you know. It's like it's yeah. crazy. It's so insane. Yeah, that movie made ten million dollars, and she like didn't have a home to live in. She, did she even get back end on it? Um, if she did, she doesn't say so in the book, but 
how would I would be shocked if someone who signed a thirty thousand yeah. dollars yeah. no. manager got back in. Oh man, right, right, that right. is yeah. that is insane. All right, because that, that was like the, that was like was that like that was like the first thing she did, right? Yeah, if she was her first audition, first anything. Yeah, yeah, so you get fucked over on the first few things you do, you know? For sure, but that was yeah. that's extreme. I just that. I can't believe they did that to her. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, or, or not give her anything in the back end to say like, Hey, if this does well, we'll take care of you. Because ultimately a lot of these like smaller indie movies, yeah, give people points. It's never going to make money anyway. Like, you know, and when you do have something like this or my big fat Greek wedding, like these movies that become these colossal uh, successes, then they can share in it. But most of the time it's like, I remember like, uh, Peter Jackson had to sue new line because they said, Oh yeah, the Lord of the Rings money. It made no money. It, we made no money on that. So like, he sued New Line. They're like, oh yeah, no, they made millions and millions of dollars yeah. on it. But they, yeah. yeah. I, I think I said they it made $10 million. That's wrong. The budget was $10 million. I mean, Mariah Carey's in that movie. Monique yeah. is in that movie. Like they found the budget for those. You're, yeah. Mariah Carey, I mean, like she didn't yeah. do that for $30,000. Right, right, yeah. right, right. All right, here's Damn. another one. This one's this is one that I didn't even know happened. Delta Burke. Wow. Uh, Delta style. Uh, I mean, so it's a style book, but basically, remember when comedians, like their whole like morning radio show DJs would just be like, this woman's fat. Like it's the Monica Lewinsky. She's fat. Yeah, I got yeah. it. It's a fat woman. So that happened to Delta and she goes and writes this book where she's like, F you, how dare all of you. And it's also a style book, but it's like, it's one of the most beautiful, like heartwarming kick-ass books. I, I just want to wreck it. Wow, I that, is not, this. that is not what I thought you were going to say about this Delta Burke book. I did not yeah. see that coming. It, it, well, I would it, say it, what you also people, know coming is that she loves plantations, so that's a bummer. But other than that, the book is oh wow, good. people are asking who is Delta Burke. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> oh god, um, she's a she's from Designing Women. Yeah, she was one of the stars of an old show before you guys were born. There used to be a thing called sitcoms, uh, and one of them was called Designing Women, and she was one of the women. Yeah, and it was a huge, like, it's kind of one of the first shows where, like, women are just going to talk, and, like, that's enough for a show. Um, the doctor in This Is Us is her current husband and her husband of, like, 30 years, Mac. For I any remember watching... I watched so much Designing Women. It was always on. I feel like this and Evening Shade, like all these like kind of weird sitcoms that no one really talks about. Like I guess Designing Women does get talked about, but like like somebody described it as like a, a younger Golden Girls in a way. Like yeah. it had that kind of a vibe. Yes, yes, that's a great description of it. Um, Go ahead, here we go. We got it. Uh, this one, Gabrielle Union. I've worked with Gabrielle Union. She seems cool as shit. This book. What do we know about this book? Tell me about this book. Okay, is it I, good or not? Too many books, so feel free to skip them. I this is one of my top five. I would give it as okay. a gift to any woman in my life. Um, my favorite thing about this book is that she gives cheating advice. <laughs> and Whoa. when I when I read it, I was like, now this is a memoir. She's like, don't cheat, but if you do, I've cheated a lot. Here's what you do. And wow. one of the best tips was um uh, well, what do you guys think the best cheating? No, I'm just kidding. I won't try you that. The no, best no, 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 yeah, do it, do it, do it, do okay. it. What do you think the advice is going to be of 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 if you cheat, what you should do? Uh, I would say uh, a really high quality uh, silicone uh, head mask. Mm -hmm. You can like like totally, uh, you know, in case you get like you know you're on surveillance cameras. That's not I'm going okay. to burner phone. I'm going burner phone because we talked about it before. Burner phone feels like that is an important part of the equation. Okay, tough because burner phone's evidence though, Paul. So oh, um, okay. Her advice is never cheat with someone who has less to lose than you do. So you cheat with someone who loves oh, their yes, yes, wow. yes. That is diabolical. Wow. Yeah. But it makes you think wow. of Jada Pinkett Smith, who cheats with this young yes. dude. You don't give a f So now he's going to talk shit on her. She should have been cheating with like Denzel Washington. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. That is great. I will tell you this, and I can't reveal any of it. And Chelsea, I'll tell you one time privately. I was with her and she told me a cheating story about some very famous people that blew my mind and I did oh. not know this is like part of her thing and she was like oh yeah and this happened and this happened I was like 
And first of all, to hear that person cheated blew my mind. And then how they cheated and how it ended, it was like, okay, you have to it. tell the story. You have to tell the story. There's no way. It, it would be a complete betrayal. I will just say that she oh, revealed someone we'll that you would- it. We'll bleep it out when we edit this. We'll bleep <laughs> it's it out. Live. I'll say this. The person that she described did the exact same thing. And it, and in this, in the sense of very, uh, very smart, very smart way of Michelle of Obama. aligning it. Michelle Obama. Hey, my lips are sealed. Whoa. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> That's hot dish. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. And then I think this is the last one that we have, and then we can let you go. But this is, uh, this is Jessica Simpson's open book. I watched you kind of live read this, or I felt like I was during the beginning of pandemic. I watched you kind of enjoying this book. And just let us in on this because this is this is like kind of an alternate Britney Spears in a way. Like there's there's yeah. a lot of weird similarities and a lot of differences too. But yeah, she's this fascinating to me. This book is incredible. It's incredible. It's how my podcast got started. Is that I I had it on pre order because I love memoirs. And then yeah, I started recapping it on my Instagram story because I was I was pretty drunk and I was like the people got to know how good this book is. And then immediately it became a podcast. So thank you, Jessica. But um. It has, I would be on the show for an hour, but the one tiny thing that's not covered a lot in her book that is one of my favorite facts is that she says, um, Nick Lachey thought of 98 Degrees as a working class boy band, like a tougher boys to men. And it's this tiny <laughs> And I was like, whoo, that, she, I mean, she talks shit on him, but that was the funniest shit I've ever read in my life. Um, is this after she got sober, somebody wants to know? Is this like a, a now book? It's, it, uh, yes. I think Jessica's still struggling a little bit, but it is mm -hmm. like her rock bottom. The book starts with her being like, I was waking up at 7 a.m. and um, drinking straight vodka all day long. And then she's like getting like tummy tucks where the doctor's like, you're probably going to die because you have no liver. And she's like, I don't care. And her mom's there being like, she's hideous. Give her the tummy tuck. And she's like going and being like, I might die because I have no liver left. Oh, oh wow. The this John is... Mayer, ugh, there's so much in this book. Oh, the John Mayer stuff too. I forgot about that. Um, it's all here every week on Celebrity Book Club. Do you read a book a week? I mean, or are you or you you've backlogged enough that you feel like, um, or are you under that pressure? We're we have we record in advance, but in order to keep up, I read a book a week. Yeah, 